As it turns out, Wakefield's findings had absolutely zero scientific basis. Two years before the paper was published, Wakefield was hired by a lawyer, Richard Barr, who was hoping to gain momentum in his class action lawsuit against pharmaceutical companies responsible for making the MMR vaccine. In total, the lawyer, Barr, paid the author, Andrew Wakefield, over $750,000 to come up with evidence linking autism to the MMR vaccine. In addition to this, Wakefield was also paid an initial sum of 55,000 pounds to create the research that would later be submitted to the journal. Also note that Wakefield did not disclose any of these payments to the journal, The Lancet, as he was obligated to do so. It was also then discovered that in June of 97, nine months before a press conference in which he called for single vaccines, Wakefield applied for a patent for a single measles vaccine. The only way this patent would be become successful is if public confidence in the existing MMR vaccine could be shaken, and if Wakefield could make this happen, he would make an absolute fortune. All of this being said, simply because somebody acts unethically and unobjectively and stands to make a great deal of money off of the failure something they're involved in doesn't necessarily mean that their idea is false. After all, they could simply have bad intentions but be right all along. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the data in Wakefield's study. To begin with, the single study which caused all of this fuss had a sample size of 12. That's it. 12. Furthermore, these children were presented as being randomly selected patients from a London hospital, when in fact it was far from the truth. 11 of the 12 patients were boys, and they had all been recruited to Wakefield through various MMR organizations. In addition, all of them were clients or contacts of the aforementioned lawyer, Barr. Zero of the 12 lived in London, two were brothers, and one of them was even flown in from the United States. This was anything but a random sample. Additionally, a reporter named Deer actually accessed the initial clinical reports and notes that were used in the study. He found that neither the hospital's pathology service or doctors found anything suggesting that the MMR vaccine was the cause of the subject's illness. Instead, Wakefield had repeatedly changed and misreported data from the study. In short, he committed undeniable fraud. The data simply did not match the paper's conclusions. Furthermore, despite repeated biopsies, the hospital declared the bowel samples obtained from all of the children to be normal. As if this wasn't enough, some of the children displayed symptoms of autism before even being vaccinated, and some of the other children's symptoms went away months later. And still worse, some of them did not even have autism at all, unlike what was stated in the, in the paper. And it gets worse. When conducting an open-ended probe into something, physically invasive, painful tests such as spinal taps, bowel biopsies, and lumbar punctures aren't permitted to be performed on patients simply based on a hunch. You have to have a good reason. And what's needed in the UK is an approval from what's called the Royal Freeze Ethics Committee. Wakefield didn't have this, so to get around this little nuance called reality, he lied to hospital administration, stating that he had the Ethics Committee's approval, and proceeded to carry out a five-day battery of physically agonizing tests on children for money. And there are several other examples of fraud, fabrication, and withholding of evidence that can be found on Brian Deere's website, located here. But all this information is superfluous. The original study was severely flawed, and it was withdrawn from The Lancet. Bottom line is that the editors of The Lancet should have screened the paper more thoroughly for its blatant, basic flaws. The Lancet editor has since issued a formal apology, stating that Wakefield's study was blatantly flawed and shouldn't have been admitted in the first place. So let's fast forward to present day. On May 24, 2010, Wakefield was finally held responsible for his criminal actions. The General Medical Council in the UK found Wakefield guilty of 30 counts of medical misconduct. He was officially banned from the medical registry. Note that this case didn't focus on whether or not his study was right or wrong, because after all, it's not a crime to honestly collect data and publish an incorrect conclusion out of ignorance. It instead focused on his criminal misconduct. The GMC ruled this January that Wakefield acted, and I quote, dishonestly and irresponsibly. He was removed f to protect his patients. Um, the panel also discovered that Wakefield had a large birthday party for his son. At it, he paid his son's child, keep in mind these are children, he paid his son's friends five British pounds for samples of their blood. Worst birthday party ever. Some of you might be thinking, well, what's the big deal? The guy's a liar, he got in trouble, and a discussion. There are several reasons that you should care and be informed about this. One, measles rates are on the rise in countries afflicted by Wakefield's misconduct. In most of the developed world, measles had been nearly eradicated until Wakefield's study. Once it was published, however, some edu uneducated parents stopped vaccinating their children. The result has been measles rates skyrocketing, resulting in 515 children dying as of June 12, 2010. Yes, that's over 500 dead children as a result of one man's greed. Still think it's not that big of a deal? 
There's even a website, JennyMcCarthyBodyCount.com, which keeps track of the numbers of preventable deaths and illnesses due to this scandal, starting in June of 2007. You may attempt to rationalize this and say that the only harm being done is to the children of uneducated parents. This, again, is false, and it's because of something nobody really talks about, herd immunity. Herd immunity is a phenomenon that happens when the vast majority of a population is immune to a disease. What essentially happens is that the immunity of the 99% makes the disease pathogen so rare that the unvaccinated 1% are protected from getting the disease. So why is this relevant? Because there are some children born with medical conditions that prevent them from re receiving vaccines. And the sad fact of the matter is that some of these children are dying from easily preventable diseases, such as measles, just because some ignorant playmate's parent chose not to vaccinate their child. The end result is sick, mentally handicapped, and dead children, all because of the greed of a few and the intellectual laziness of uninformed parents who would rather listen to a Playboy bunny than the scientific evidence. If you aren't vaccinating your child because of fear of autism, wake up. You're not only putting your child's health in danger, but other people's children as well. And no child should have to die of something so easily prevented. I've said my piece. You've been informed, you've seen the evidence, and ignorance is no longer an excuse. So aside from vaccinating your children, what can you do to help? You can do your part and help share this video and the information in it with others, particularly with anti-vaxxers and concerned parents you know. Most of them aren't bad people, they're simply misinformed and uneducated about this issue. Please, do your part and help bring them out of the dark. Thank you.